See that? I'm here like this. Fifth wire, take my step. Like so. Right? All right, so let's get started with the opening action to fourth ward. In this ward, what we want to do is we want to hold our buckler out in front to cover our midline. We want the sword to be held up over our head in this manner. I want my buckler foot forward and I want my sword foot backward. And I want to be, I don't have to use a lot of force, but I want to be able to threaten that I'm going to use force when I come down and strike. Now, as I come down and strike, my buckler goes forward and I cut. I take my step forward, right? And as I do that, I'm going to step closer so you can see. As I do that, I'm fighting for control of the center line. And then once I do that, I want to put my point in line once I found it and thrust through. The buckler is protecting my hand, you see? It's protecting my hand, but also my head and uh, my, my center. Um, but I also want to be able to see what I am doing. So uh, camera, you can still see my eye. I'll try it again, like so, here I am. Strike and then move forward. And notice how my eye can still see the camera. And uh, that way I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna feel a lot of that with my sword um, as I thrust, but again, I'm here like so. Bam, I take center and then I thrust in. That is opening action for fourth ward. Um, it's very thrust centric, this uh, I-33. Um, they had their gamison underneath with chainmail, and oftentimes they did have a coat of plates, right? But if you wanted to disable somebody by slashing them, um, it would be very difficult indeed. In order to be effective in your martial capability, you are going to want to thrust through the mail with the tip of your sword. Let's get into fifth ward. So fifth ward, I'm gonna do a side profile. Now I have my buckler at the ready, okay? It's always in the center, it's not off to the side, it's, it's centered, okay? And I'm holding my sword down at my hip and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up a diagonal cut. Right, a diagonal cut to gain access to the center and then thrust in. Ideally, I would be able to do that with just one motion, but it didn't always happen that way. But that is the opening action to the ward. So I'm here, have my buckler like this. I take my step, I cut to the side, and then I thrust in. The reason why I do that is because here's my target, here's where they expect me to be. Well, if I'm not there, if I'm here, Changing my angle helps me find that center line to them as I fight them at a slight angle and then I can come in. Notice that there's a built-in twist. I come here, I make contact with the blade and then I twist to come in. That twisting action gives me a mechanical advantage if I want to find the center and thrust inward. We're gonna explore that a little bit more in sixth ward. Six ward really illustrates this principle quite well. I'm gonna use with my trainer here. So with six ward, you're gonna hold it center, but you don't wanna hold it in the center of your chest, at least I don't like to, because your buckler is in the center and it knocks the sword offline. But they say in the manual that you hold it to your breast. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offset it to my right, okay, like this, and then my my buckler is going to be here in the center. Okay? Now from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my step and I'm going to thrust and turn. I'm going to spin at the same time. If they're trying to cut into my sword and create a bind and push me offline, it's much more difficult to do that if I am rotating in the art style is, is old and it's kind of goofy and it, you see the thumb like this and you think, well, that's kind of weird looking to this with a dagger because I'm close to the camera. The same way you are spinning in and you're thrusting as you spin and what that does is it helps your blade not get caught up in your opponent's bind. So that's sixth ward. <coughs> Seventh ward, 
It's called Longort. And the manual distinctly says that all six wards end up in like the seventh ward, like Long Point or Longort, as it's called. It just reiterates that this is a thrusting-centric form of martial art. And Longort, as its own ward, is just a way of preserving the distance between you and your opponent, or you and your enemy in their case, like so. And all other wards form into Longort. So that's what the I-33 manual shows for wards 4, 5, 6, and 7 using uh, sword and buckler. Let's see if we can't perform those same actions with a heater shield. So with the heater shield, we definitely have some options with the straps. Now, this particular configuration uh, that I have here was based off a surviving shield that we have that dates around 1350. And that date is congruent with the uh, same time frame of the I-33 manual. And that's why I find this particular this particular configuration very interesting. We have these two main straps and we have these two uh, side straps right here. That gives us some choices. So number one, the horizontal grip. Uh, second grip, of course, is they had this down here. We have down here what I call the oblique position. And some really interesting things happen when you grip the shield down here like this. Um, when you make your thrust, you are covering your hand with the shield. So this tells me right off the bat that heater shields were implemented si in certain ways similar to uh, a buckler. So you're not just going to hold it close to your body and swing your hand like this, um, clanging, clinging against their shield and then maybe lifting your shield up as they cling against yours. That would be very basic and rudimentary, and um, a number of different straps could facilitate that. But the fact that this strap comes down here, and this was actually popular, you could see this in, uh, in artwork, and it's really interesting. Um, you see, there's one painting in particular, you see the knight doing this kind of thing, like this. Um, obviously, you can't just hold your shield out like this indefinitely in a fight, but in certain, in certain maneuvers, you certainly can. Hold your shield out, and as you do that, of course, your head's protected, and your hand is protected as you strike as well, much like a buckler. So, what's also interesting to note is that we have these two main straps here. I call them main straps. Um, and I think that uh, you could hold them center grip if you wanted to. I really do. Um, they were very familiar with center grip shields. Um, the buckler is an example of that. So when you, what I'm getting at is when you center grip the heater shield, you're still getting the benefits of the heater shield, but then you're adding the benefits of a center grip shield at the same time. The only problem with center grip shields is that you get tired. you got to hold on to the thing the whole time. So I'm going to center grip it first in fourth ward. Okay, I'm here like this, and what I want to do is I keep the... I keep the shield in my center, and I'm going to step and come down hard like this, and then thrust. And that can happen no problem. I'm here like this. I'm holding my shield in the center like so. I thrust and move, and uh, it performs well. Um, so that's fourth ward center grip. Okay, so let's, track, let's practice fifth ward center gripped as well. Fifth ward, my sword is here to my side, and I'm taking a step, right? I'm taking a, a lateral step, lateral and forward, and I'm cutting upward like so, and then I want to find center. Okay, so I'm here like this, sword is at my side, I cut upwards and thrust. Doesn't seem like that's that difficult. I'm going to try it with a trainer so you guys can see like this okay sword is at my side like so I take my step come here and I thrust doesn't seem like it's so much of a problem do I feel it in my arm yeah but again um, someone I think who who trains with the shield they could do that reasonably well for 15 minutes and they just strap it back up again it's it's not that that big a deal uh, okay so six ward Six ward, I am going to do this. Actually, let's do this. Let's do six ward first with my dagger. Okay, I'm holding it again like this. 
to my breast. I'm holding my shield out like this. I take my step and I thrust. I don't think that's very hard either. And I thrust. See, I'm here and I thrust. Not a problem. So now here like this, I'm here and I thrust. Not a problem. If I, if I want to set up for it, I certainly can. I set up for it and I strike. Doesn't seem to be much of a problem. If you're doing one-on-one -on -one combat, that's not even going to last two minutes. You're probably talking like 45 seconds and it's over. And you either never need your shield again or you can strap it up and, uh, and move on. So it's not much of a problem. Okay, so seventh ward, long ward. Okay, like this. Doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. Long ward, okay. So I could do wards four, five, and six pretty easily using the center grip for my shield. So let's switch over to the horizontal grip. Okay, here I am. I'm guarding my inside line. I'm couching my head behind the tip of the shield. I'm threatening, big threatenings with my, with my hand raised high, right? And I strike. See? And I strike. It doesn't seem to be much of a problem. Um, now let's try that fourth ward, like so. Okay. Again, I'm here. An interesting thing with fourth ward, I can, using the oblique grip, I can rest my arm a little bit by just bringing my elbow in and my hand kind of up a bit. And look how much protection I'm giving myself. And the shield point goes out a little bit. Um, so even though it's not directly covering my leg, it is still out a bit. And the reason why that's good is because it's covering a line angle of attack. So that's not much of a problem at all. So here I am like this, and I strike. Now, when I do that, what's really interesting with the oblique strap, let's see if I can do it this way. Okay, I'm here like this, and I cut. Notice how much protection my head gets. Notice how much protection my hand gets. And notice how much protection my center line gets from the curve of the heater shield. It's subtle. Here we go. Boom, like so. Okay. So in a game of millimeters, centimeters count, right? And so this curve of my heater shield covers my center line. As I extend out, my head is covered and my hand is covered <coughs> and my center line is covered <coughs> from doing that fourth ward action. And so this actually works very well with a power stroke that we find in fourth ward. Okay. Um, excellent properties of protection using the heater shield in the uh, oblique strap. Okay. So that's uh, fourth ward. Let's uh, now continue to fifth ward. So I'm going to hold this strap like this, my hands down like this. What I'm going to do is come up like this as I cut upward. All right. So when I'm holding it in the uh, oblique strap, I have my horizontal hand strap right here that is getting close to my coolion. You see that? You see that? Especially if I'm rotating. So that could be a potential issue with uh, fifth ward and the heater shield. <coughs> it's important. Um, like, uh, you know, pants, modern day pockets. Uh, I don't know how many times I've done something and it actually catches my, <coughs> and it actually catches my coolion, right? And uh, well, that's not something that medieval people had to worry about, but they probably did have to worry about that action when you're coming up like this and you've caught your, caught your, uh, your strap, right? Especially if you're trying to spin in. So that is definitely something to worry about. You wanna strike to the tip and I'm here like this. And I strike like so. Right? I want to strike under the tip and then thrust in. And notice my hand gets maximum protection if I'm doing that. So what that means is, is uh, my, my shield hand needs to come forward more. So I can't be lazy and like bring it down that way. I have to bring it forward like so. Boom, explode out 
as I do that, try it with this one so it doesn't hurt the camera. So as I'm here like this, I come up, boom, like so. And if I do that, then I can avoid the strap. See? See that? I'm here like this. Fifth wire, take my step, boom, like so. Right? And that way I avoid the strap totally. And I'm still covering what I need to cover. Does my arm get a little tired? Yeah, if I'm holding it up there. But if it's, you know, really quick, I'm here like this, boom, like so. You just have to do it properly. So if you do it properly, you don't worry about this strap at all. So that's fifth ward oblique. Okay, so now let's try fifth ward in the, uh, in the horizontal position. There are a lot of straps here that you gotta worry about. And when you're holding this, naturally what you want to do is you want to come up like this. And as I do that, see I wanna bring my hands together. As I do that and I come in, you know, I, as I sort of spin, what happens is I do have a strong potential of catching my coolians in the, the straps. I want to avoid that. It's not correct to assume that a heavier shield, you're going to be extending your arm out all the time as you fight. Um, it takes a lot of energy away from you, and that is exactly why a buckler is small in the first place. They cut down weight, and so then you can hold it out and do that kind of thing. Um, there's just advantages to that, right? But there's also a lot of disadvantages. So you need a bigger shield in wartime to cover you more, right? And so you're not going to be putting your hands out all the time as you're fighting like you would a buckler. Your arm's just going to get really, really tired. You're going to burn out and you're going to get killed. Okay, so this is you want to keep your arms closer to your body. So here I am in fifth ward. Fifth ward like so. What I'm going to do is my hand, I'm just going to touch it, touch it to my head. And as I do that, see what it does? It definitely creates a line of protection from an attack coming in, right? Angle it like this. And as I do that, I come in and strike with my sword. And then from there, I thrust in. Now look, my hand's totally extended. My, my hand is here, I'm covering my head, I'm covering my center, right? I could still see, not wearing out this hand. And interestingly, my arm is fully extended, my sword hand, and it's still covered as I thrust. Okay, so here in fifth ward, I'm gonna try it again. You go like this, cut and thrust. See, totally covered. There you go. So there's some different advantages that you get um, with these straps. Let's go ahead and do sixth ward. So sixth ward with the horizontal strap. Okay, I'm here like this, right? I can extend my shield out to cover my sword tip from getting bound and thrust. There doesn't seem to be any issue with six ward whatsoever using heater shield. Seems like uh, bread and butter play in the horizontal grip. Now let's try the oblique grip. <coughs> six ward. Here I am like so. Ooh, I got the shinies. Different wards, different actions. And then suddenly, I strike. Well, there you go. That's probably how it's going to go down. So, six ward, you can do it <laughs> like so. There you go. Now, one thing to note, it is more difficult to do a sustained fight using this strap configuration with heater shield especially if you're going to treat it like a buckler. Um, it's not a buckler, but 
a lot of those same actions from I-33 do transfer over to this shield. All right, guys, uh, I hope this was uh, informative for you. Uh, smash that like button if this is something that you like. If you want more content like this, if you want to learn how to fight with the heater shield, this is the channel for you. But I am dedicated to furthering the art of understanding the heater shield as it was used in a historical context because I want to fight sword and heater shield in a, a hematype arena why should sca have all the fun with swords of shield guys it's incredibly fun it's very kinetic there's a lot of really really cool things to learn and discover and do with the heater shield plus it's really nice and sexy you can have your your uh, heraldry on your shield, whatever you want. Gosh, that, that would be awesome. Join me in that movement. It's something that uh, we all need to work on together. Okay, guys, that's all I got. Again, this is Coach Nate McBride with the Blade Fit Academy. Always remember to slay your demons, and I will catch you on the next video. Take care.